Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together Short Bite Edition. Through the magic of radio, we have Kathleen back again to uh, review yet another curriculum that she has implemented. And it's a great way to kind of help our listeners and help people who are trying to make that decision for the coming year or, you know, what type of curriculums they want to do to really have people who've, you know, actually done it. So today, Kathleen's going to talk a lot about the lightning literature curriculum. So take it away. Hi. Yeah, so uh, Lightning Literature is a composition and grammar uh, language arts curriculum. Um, It's not a comprehensive, so it doesn't include reading. It doesn't include handwriting or anything like that. But we uh, used it for second grade uh, for my oldest son. And um, what I love about this curriculum is, at least for second grade, um, each week is an assigned picture book. Um, So for week one, it was Max's words, for example, Um, and he read, you know, we read Max's words, he read it um, in the teacher's manual, it has um, by day, some of the questions to ask for reading comprehension on that assigned book for that week. And in the, in the teacher's manual, um, it's set up as a four day uh, curriculum. Day five is for enrichment or for catch up or um, for additional um, anything that needs to be done or finished. So, you know, for the first day, you have your reading, you read the book, you answer some questions or you ask your child some questions and they answer and you kind of guide them uh, through the responses if you need to. It has a little possible answers on it. And then you have the student workbook, which uh, you can get as a PDF. Um, you can get both of these as a PDF. Uh, a student workbook, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting the actual physical book because it is very colorful and very pretty. <laughs> um, and it would eat up all of my color ink <laughs> if I had to print it all out. And it's color coded. So each book and each week is a different color. Um, so in the student manual or in the student workbook, on the cover, on the contents page, it'll tell you like, this is green, this is yellow. Um, the titles are all different colors. And then on the pages, you can easily open your student book and find the color. And that's the week that you're on. Um, so it's a, it's a great visual guide for kids, especially if you kind of read the book, do your comprehension questions, and then kind of set them free. Like I tend to do with, uh, with my oldest. And so he can easily open it to the color page, um, that he needs. And then it's, it's, uh, labeled day one, day two, day three, day four. Um, So, you know, it's like, okay, I finished day one, now to day two. And then on the student workbook, it's grammar. Um, So they mainly work through grammar. Day one is some kind of grammar introduction. So be it um, punctuation or proper nouns or anything like that. Um, Day two is a continuation of that same week's theme on grammar. Um, But you also, the student, your child also does um, a kind of written uh, summary of what they read on one page. And then on the next page, it has, you know, what did you like about it? What did you not like about it kind of response? And then it has a copy work part where you copy down your favorite sentence from the book. And this is repeated throughout the entire level. Um, And I believe it's through most of the, or all of the elementary levels. It does the same kind of concept of day one, day two, you know, writing summary, day three, day four, more grammar practice. Grade two is split up with every couple weeks you do a poetry um, through the Random House, Children's Random House Book of Poetry. You take a week to go through some of the poems and you discuss um, different poem concepts. We learned some poetry vocabulary, like what a stanza is, what a line is, Um, And that's also worked through the workbook. So talk about it and then it's reinforced in the workbook. Um, The teacher's guide also has like the answers and everything in it. 
So if you if you open up, it has kind of a small snapshot of your student workbook in your teacher guide, so you can see um, what's going on with it. And um, as for at least for second grade, as you progress, we're about to get to the part where we're entering chapter books. Um, so for most of the year, it, every week has been a picture book, and now we're about to enter chapter books where it's going to be spread out through a couple weeks. It looks like. Um, so for example, Boxcar Children is near the end of the year. Um, and that's over three weeks. And we do also have review within the student workbook where it says, you know, back in, you know, back before you learned about adverbs. So we're going to do a, a day on adverbs to review it or they'll, mm -hmm. you know, on the same review section, um, it has like, okay, well, we talked about poetry terms. These are some of the terms. Um, there's still a book that they read that week. So you still do that summary. And then that week was review. I think there's one more section of review that we're going to be coming up on soon. Um, so it's nice that you're not just being thrown all the grammar and then your child is expected to just remember it. They do have review worked into it where it's like, hey, do you remember this? Um, which is really nice. Um, and I really like that the themes of the grammar are tied into the book. So for example, one of the lessons could be um, reorder this broken up sentence. And that sentence was in that book that they read. So if they can't figure it out on that page, they can just bring back that book, open it to the page, find the sentence and figure out how it was laid out. And then put one, two, three, four on how to rearrange the broken up sentence, which I, I personally really enjoy because I like having purpose <laughs> in my curriculum. I like the fact that the picture books serve a purpose and aren't just there to be read, but also to be used in the curriculum. Um, there's also a composition section to this. We haven't really used it just because um, we're still learning writers. Um, I make him do the, the minimum three sentences paragraph that it that's in there. The teacher manual has how to scale up or scale down the composition sections depending on the skills of your of your of your writer of your students um, or of your child so you don't have to do as much you can do as little as you need to you can kind of learn the concept you know we've written a letter we learned how to write a letter and how to address an envelope learned how to uh, write a brief uh, biography type letter how to interview um, some family members to write some of these um, and things like that um, it doesn't have a very comprehensive um, composition like lesson. It's, it doesn't teach you how to write a paragraph or anything like that. I had to source that out myself. So I think that's one of the demerits on this one, though I have heard that they're adding like extra resources on the actual website um, of this curriculum. Mm -hmm. So like for anyone who needs that little extra practice for the composition, because it's not really provided in these books. Um, and then my, my other draw to it is the fact that it goes from grade one all the way to high school level. Oh. <laughs> so mm -hmm. right now I think it's up to grade six or grade seven. Maybe it already finished up to grade eight, but it has the options in high school to pick like English composition. So it's, it's a curriculum that I like that we enjoy and I can see that we can keep with it without having to decide what curriculum we have to pick because they don't have enough when we get to middle school or high school because it's, it's going to be there. Um, the other thing too is it's, it, for me, it's secular, which is important to my family. So it's, it's, it's one of the few, <laughs> it's one of the few secular language arts curriculums that are out there. Okay. Uh, so I had a question uh, maybe just from, you know, I'm not to that point yet. And you, you sound like you're, you're right at that point when they're assigned a chapter book or some type of larger reading, you know, and then they have to do the workbook. And are you then, in essence, I don't, lack of a better term, grading the work that they're doing? Um, is there a way to check what they're they're doing? Or are you reading the book along with them so that you have the knowledge of, say, the boxcar children is a good example. Like, are you reading that book with him so that you can then assess whether he, you know, completed the, the work correctly or the composition work correctly? Um, so that the composition work would would vary greatly on that one, just because the composition, okay. although it ties into the theme of the book, it's not necessarily like, OK, you're writing a book report on the book. Okay. Um, one of like for Max's words from week one, uh, the composition wasn't even quite like a, a letter type or any kind of uh, paragraph or anything like that. It was create a dictionary or start a word list. 
um, in a separate notebook. Um, when we got to a book that talked about a letter that was written, that one was one where it was, hey, write a letter to a friend or write a letter to a family member. And in the teacher manual, it tells you what the composition is and how it should be, like what should be in it essentially. And generally like guidance on how many sentences or what should be included in the sentences for your child, depending on their level. For what I do with him on the actual readings, um, he's fairly independent. So um, for books that are easier to comprehend, where he can understand the, the, the moral of the story or like the, 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 the theme of the story, he can read it independently. And then if I know like vaguely what the book is, because some of these are like Caldecott winners and things that I okay. read when I was in elementary school. So I, I know some of these books. <laughs> so yes. um, I'll just go through the, the reading comprehension questions that are actually in the teacher manual. And that's how I kind of assess whether or not he understands the book. Um, if he's not understanding it, then I will read it to him. And then we'll discuss the questions after, because sometimes having a, another person read it to you helps. Sometimes he'll read it to me if that's helping. Sometimes he'll read it out loud to himself or um, read it a couple times. There's uh, one, one book that we had, he had to read actually like four or five times uh, because even me reading it to him, he didn't understand it. And even going through the questions, he didn't quite understand it because it was a, a mythology type story and he didn't quite understand the point of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and after reading it a couple times, he finally understood like, oh, okay, okay, this is what, what they're trying to get across. Um, more recently, we had a little bit more of a serious book that we read about, it's Moonshine, Sam Bangs and Moonshine was the book, and it was about a girl who spoke moonshine a lot, which was basically fibbing or lying, and um, it was the concept of the consequences of lying, and that's kind of a benign topic for an eight-year-old, <laughs> so that was definitely a lot of, like, guided questions of, like, what do you think moonshine means? what do you think your dad meant by don't do this um, kind of thing? Um, so some of these books, it's it's definitely going to depend on your reader. From what I understand, the lightning literature is at or slightly above grade level for like comparing to public school language arts levels. So if your child has like a little bit of difficulty understanding like abstract concepts, um, it might be best to pre-read some of the books in the levels to make sure it's something that your child will um, appreciate or will understand or, you know, has the ability to understand. Um, and I know some of the books, some people don't enjoy just because of some of the themes um, that they have just based on, you know, it's picture books. And some of these are from like the 90s and the seven, you know, 70s to like, I think mid 2000s. And okay. back then, picture children's picture books were varied <laughs> yes <laughs> to say yeah. so some pre-reading might be needed for parents who are um who are a little bit pickier about um what they want their kids to read sure yeah a little bit of content there and maybe some inline editing there well and it sounds like this is a this is a program too where you can't just swap the book because the book has yeah. is tied in with the rest of the you know we, in some of the other curriculums that we do if if we read read that book or you know we either it's not available or we don't like it for whatever reason we can usually swap it and it's pretty easily done yes it's, it's definitely harder in this one um to to swap out in some of the lessons because they do use sentences directly from the book there are some that are a little bit more benign like there's some biographies that kind of take liberty with the lessons so it's not directly like from the book but it's using the example of for example biographies like we read um, a picture book biography about mark twain um, okay. but the lesson itself was about biographies in general so not specifically about Mark Twain. I think it was mentioned like once in the thing, but there are other historical references, other historical persons that were referenced in that lesson. Um, so I think in that case, you could probably swap out with one of the other books. But some of the other ones, it definitely is harder because, you know, we read one that was a Native American tale of, of Sequoia and it used the, the words from because, you know, Sequoia was a Native American who created an alphabet for his people, and that's used in that lesson. Um, and I maybe if you found a separate book that was about his tribe, about his people, it would work, or a different book about Sequoia if, for example, that one didn't work. Um, hmm. So you'd have to definitely pre-read it and look at it to see, like, how you could. 
um, it, it's definitely would take a lot more work <laughs> to sure. swap well, out. You. So that's something to be aware of with this. It sounds like that, you know, you need to make sure that you either own all the books or that they're available all at your library and that you're happy with the selections yes. that they've made because, because it's, it's otherwise 30, you, yeah. 30 weeks of 30 books. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today and, and sh- teaching us about this. And I think it, this was probably be very helpful to, yeah, you know, really great. Cause I've heard of this one before. Yeah. A lot, a lot of us are, you know, early learners and we're starting to get into that first, second, third grade type of range. So we have to make these considerations. So it was really nice to hear from you about this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!